Does your son spend too much time on Facebook? Does your husband compulsively research Wikipedia? Does your best friend ignore your calls because she's always online? It all boils down to one thing. No, internet addiction. And that's today's BFD. Brain Food Daily. Is internet addiction a disorder? Not yet, according to the American Medical Association. Still, psychologists agree that repeating any activity to the point where it disrupts your life is a disorder. And by disruption, we don't mean, whoops, I got sidetracked by HuffPo and now I'm late for dinner. We mean, whoops, I got sidetracked by HuffPo and now I lost my job, my boyfriend left me, I'm six figures in debt, and I forgot to eat my last five dinners. Damn you, HuffPo side boobs page! Strangely, a lot of internet psych studies are done on World of Warcraft, the multiplayer online role-playing game, and the number one form of birth control among men ages 14 to 32. Sing! Gotcha, nerds! <laughs> a recent study at McLean Hospital found that up to 40% of Warcraft players are addicted to the game. There are actually already 14 documented deaths due to online game addiction. Those are people that died from playing a game. I guess they died doing what they loved? Even if you've never played Warcraft, if you're spending a good amount of time online, the internet has probably changed your brain. A study at Columbia University shows that using sites like Wikipedia and Google might drastically affect our, um, uh, hmm, what's that word that I'm thinking of? It's the, oh, memory. According to the study, people who knew they could find information online are less likely to memorize said information. We know the internet isn't a syringe full of chemicals you can inject, yet. So, how can you become addicted to it? Science time! According to University of Michigan professor Kent Barrage, the internet makes us release the addictive chemicals inside our brains. We are the matrix! When we achieve something, our brain releases opioids, so we feel satisfied. When we crave something, we only get dopamine. It turns out that real face-to-face -face social interactions release sweet, sweet opioids. But interacting with friends via Facebook and Twitter do not. That's why someone with an addiction can crave the internet, but not really enjoy it. Huh, nothing good on Facebook right now. Twitter then? Nope, nothing good on Twitter. Back to Facebook, all right, and I hate my life. If you think your problem might be serious or know someone who needs help, contact a specialist. Check out the links in the description. I'm Leelon Bowden. Thanks for watching Brain Food Daily. And be sure to subscribe this show. Other shows you can cut down on. Want to get off the internet but don't know how? First, subscribe to BFD. Then close out your browser and go get some fresh air.